If you want to understand ancient ecosystems, coprolites are one of the key. This is actually a preserved dropping made by a marine reptile or amphibian 251 million years ago. You can see these small pieces inside, which are actually bits of ammonite shell and bones from fish. It's fossils like these that allow us to reconstruct diet from long extinct animals. Hi, my name is Ben Keir. I'm the curator of rhetoric paleontology here at the Museum of Evolution at Uppsala University. My job is to look after fossils spanning the range of the history of life from the very beginning of the first vertebrates way down 400 million years ago and more, right up to the present day. But my main interest is working in the polar regions, places like Svalbard and Greenland, where I'm interested in looking at the very beginning of the age of dinosaurs, 251.9 million years ago. What we're doing there is trying to understand how ecosystems and climate change have shaped the evolution of major groups of animals today. So the lineages we're looking at are ancient marine reptiles and amphibians, animals like this. This is the skull of a giant amphibian that once inhabited the seas in today what is Svalbard, the Norwegian Arctic archipelago. What we want to understand is how these animals first moved back into the ocean. Remember that these are animals that lived on land, lived in fresh waters, but adapted over time to occupy open ocean environments. Why did this occur and what were the drivers? This is the main question that we're wanting to ask and one of the main questions we want to answer. What we found is that 251.9 million years ago, the world was recovering from a global mass extinction. In fact, the most extreme extinction event of all time. 90% of the world's uh, species living in the oceans go extinct virtually simultaneously in a geological instant. In the recovery after this extinction, we see the irradiation of the first animals into the open oceans, the first vertebrates, the first tetrapods, that is the animals with limbs, like you and me, adapting their limbs into flippers and going back to the oceans. So this is in fact a story of extinction recovery and global climate change, because the beginning of the age of dinosaurs was also marked by the most extreme greenhouse conditions the world has ever seen. It's supposed to have been so hot that the equator is cooking, it's lethal. But these animals adapted to this extreme environment and they adapted at the poles. So the polar regions have been very, very important for the evolution of animals adapting back to life in the oceans. Aside from amphibians, there was also a bizarre suite of reptiles. This is the skull of an ichthyosaur, a fish lizard. You can see the eye here, the teeth, and a long, thin snout. This was one of the first reptiles to adapt to life in the sea, and it did so by modifying its body from something that may have looked some, a bit like a crocodile into something that looked like a fish or a whale. The transition, or the evolutionary transition that created this animal is what we're really wanting to understand and how environment has shaped this. We can see from the skull that this animal is obviously eating fish and probably eating small squid-like animals called ammonites. Diet is very, very important because it tells us something about ecology. So we can look at, for example, fossilised droppings and see what's inside these and determine what these animals are eating. They're eating each other. How is this part of a larger ecosystem that we can reconstruct and understand what's going on and compare it to ecosystems today. What we can see is also from the teeth that they are doing different things. For example, this is another Triassic, as this is the very beginning of the age of dinosaurs, the Triassic period, Triassic marine reptile. This is a placodont, placodont. And inside you can see it has these rows of crushing teeth. This is an animal that's feeding off the bottom and crushing up ammonites and other things like this and crushing up shells off the seafloor. What's preying on these animals are larger aquatic predators. This is the vertebra of a pistosaur. It's an ancestor of the plesiosaurs. These are the famous Loch Ness monster kind of animals. You can see here where the ribs would have attached and the holes in the bottom are for blood vessels. There was the last time blood vessels pumped into this bone was 250 million years ago. So it's a snapshot of biology, a snapshot of life caught in geological time. And this is one of the gems from the collection, one of the most unexpected finds we had from our last Greenland trip. These are actually the bones of an early dinosaur. What you can see here is part of a limb. And also teeth. This was clearly a carnivore. 
and would have lived on the land while the giant marine reptiles were living in the oceans. Here you can see some of the ecosystem, again from the very beginning of the age of dinosaurs. These are fossilised fish and they're beautifully preserved. This is a fish called Bobostrania. You can see it's a kind of disc-like uh, fish, probably filter feeding on small things, small uh, animals in the, in the water column. Here's another one. This is actually an early coelacanth called Laugia. You can see this vertebra here. This is the skull and the tail, which is just coming out of the block. Um, these are ammonites. So it's the shells of squid-like animals that inhabited the sea at the very beginning of the age of dinosaurs. You can see here this coiled shell. The animal would have come out the end here. So you can imagine that this would have had a squid-like animal coming out at the end. But these are hugely prolific at the beginning of the age of dinosaurs and would have formed the major food source for the giant marine reptiles and amphibians.